Good morning. Thank you so very much for joining me this morning as we join millions around the world in this national day of prayer. And oh, how our world, especially the country that I live in, the United States of America, oh, how we need prayer warriors, prayers from persons who intercede on behalf of situations that are going on in our country, in our churches, in our personal lives. We have the awesome opportunity to go to the Lord in prayer. And to have a day that we have set aside to do exactly that is such a welcome change and a, a, an extraordinary blessing that we get this opportunity to do that. And certainly I am grateful to God and I feel blessed that I can share these few moments with you in prayer. So God bless you. Thank you so much. I'm blessed and highly favored simply because this is the day that the Lord has made. And I've come to rejoice in my own time, my own space. I've come to rejoice and to be glad in it. What a marvelous, again, what a marvelous, marvelous opportunity we have. And certainly our church has been in participation with this for a number of years. And again, we're participating this year. We are praying all over the DMV. We have prayer warriors all over the DMV to engage in prayers of specific topics, themes, and concerns. So God promises to hear the prayers of his people. And he admonishes us that we ought to always pray and not to faint. For the fervent, effectual, my prayers of righteous people availeth much. And there's an old hymn that says we can take everything to God in prayer. And this is our time to do that. And again, corporately, publicly, uh, we have the opportunity to do that. So I'm exceptionally proud to share with you the next few moments uh, an intercessory prayer. I am going to be using a scripture coming from Galatians chapter number two and verse six and seven. I always feel that when you're praying, you need to, to undergird or give foundation to your prayer or prayers through scripture. So mine is coming from again, Galatians chapter two, verses six and seven. I'm gonna read it first in the New International Version, then I'm going to read it in the English Standard Version. So I'm going to use both of those translations. Let me begin by reading it in the NIV, the New International Version. Here's what Paul says in Colossians number, chapter number two, verses six and seven. Here's what he says. So then, just as you received Christ Jesus as the Lord, as you have received him as in salvation, just so then just as you received Christ Jesus as the Lord, continue, that means progress, study, establish, continue to live your lives in him. In him, rooted and built up in him strengthened in your faith. So we are grounded in our faith through our salvation. And then as we strengthen in the faith, as you were taught, and then with overflowing thankfulness. Here's what it says in the English Standard Version or translation. Same chapter, Colossians 2, verses six and seven. Here's what it says. Therefore, as you receive Christ Jesus as Lord, as you have received him through the plan of salvation, through the death and the burial and the resurrection of Jesus, as you have received Jesus as Lord. Here's what the English standard says. So walk in him, live, move, have your being, walk according to his word, walk in him, root it, established and built up in him. So when you're rooted and you're built up in him, you have established your lifestyle unto or into what the Lord has 
uh, designed your life to be. So we are saved, then we establish ourselves in him. We walk according to his word and build ourselves up. So he says, rooted and built up in him and established in the faith, which means we believe the word of God. We believe what the Bible says as we are rooted, established, grounded, and saved through Jesus Christ, our Lord. We are in him. We are established in faith, just as you were taught. So we, we're, we're, be, we're being taught. We're learning how to walk, establish our faith, be rooted and grounded in Jesus Christ, who is the Lord of our salvation. And then it says, abounding in thanksgiving. So let me read it without any interruptions of the verses. Therefore, as you receive Christ Jesus, the Lord, so walk in him, rooted and built up in him and established in the faith, just as you were taught, abounding in thanksgiving. So we're thankful. So I'm going to pray this morning. Uh, from our theme, Exalting Christ, Exalt Christ, who has established us. Let's pray. Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus, we come this morning to give you praise, honor, and thanks. We are so grateful and so appreciative to all that you have done for us, all that you're doing through us, and all that you will do for and through us. We are eternally grateful. We pause to bless you before we go into any type of prayer, requests, petitions, or supplications. We want to first pause and give you glory, honor, and praise. That is certainly do your name. So Father, we pause to say great is the Lord and greatly to be praised. From the rising of the sun to the going down of the same, the Lord's name is worthy to be praised. We honor you in every aspect of our lives. And we are the better because we belong to the family of Jesus Christ, our Lord. And so, Father, we come this morning with no complaints. We come with thanksgiving again, grateful hearts. Thank you for being our provider. Thank you for being our protector. Thank you have, for being our God and our guide. It is in you that we live and move and have reason to go on. You have established us and you've caused us to know that serving Jesus Christ, our Lord, brings us into a full relationship with God, our Father. So we thank you for Jesus who died on a cross that we may have a right to establish a new covenant relationship with you. Therefore, we can call you Abba, Father. How great you are. How magnificent you are. Oh, how marvelous is your works in our lives. We don't know who, where, or what we would be had we not come into full relationship with Jesus Christ, our Lord and our Savior. We dare not trust the sweetest frame, but we continue to wholly lean on Jesus' name. On that rock, Jesus Christ, we stand. All of the ground is seeking sand. So Father, we have come to you this morning in total devotion, total loyalty. Our allegiance is to you. There is no other. We serve no other God but God Jehovah. We are pledge our allegiance to no other God but God Jehovah. And we come with thankful hearts and grateful hearts for all that you have done for us. It is in you that we live and move again and have reason to go on. Without you, we are nothing. We're like ships tossed upon the rugged, raging sea without a sail. But with you, all things become possible. You are the creator of the ends of the universe. And from everlasting to everlasting, you're God. You're the beginning and the ending. You're the first, you're the last, you're the alpha and 
you are the Omega. My God, in you we trust. We do not trust in horses or chariots, but we trust in the name of the Lord. For the name of the Lord is a strong tower where righteous people can run therein and find safety. We are leaning under your everlasting and on your everlasting arm. And your shadow of grace has been upon us. So we thank you for your amazing grace. <laughs> thank you for your compassions that fail not, that are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness toward us. Thank you because you brought us out of darkness into this marvelous light. And we declare that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of the Father. You have been whatever we needed when we needed it. And though your ways are not like our ways and your thoughts are not like our thoughts, we have complete confidence and trust that the plans and the thoughts, the thoughts and the plans that you have for us will bring us to victorious ends and gain us much success. Thank you for your favor that we could not earn and certainly do not deserve. But you in your graciousness look beyond all of our faults and you saw our needs, wrapped your loving arms around us and brought us into a place of repentance where we could ask for forgiveness, receive your grace and mercy and stand before you as though we had never ever sinned. Oh, what a price you paid that we may have this precious gift called salvation. So Father, we thank you this morning. We call you in remembrance of your word. They said we could come boldly to the throne of grace through prayer, seek help, find comfort, strength, love and guidance in the time of need. We call you in remembrance of your word that states that you are a very present help mm, in the time of need. We call you in remembrance of your word that says when two or three of us gather together wherever we are, but gather together in the spirit, call upon your name, you would be in the midst of us. And on this national day of prayer, there are believers and prayer intercessors that are calling upon your name, that have aligned and adjoined ourselves with you, according to scripture, that when we call on you, you will hear us, and that men ought to always pray and not to faint, and that if we seek you, we'll find you. If we knock, doors will be open. So Father, we thank you for your word that will never, ever fail. Thank you that your word has been our refuge and our fortress. Thank you that you have given us the ability to cry loud, spare not, lift up our voice like a trumpet. Thank you because you are our shepherd. The earth is the Lord's, the fullness thereof, and they that dwell therein. We thank you for your eternal, everlasting word that will never fail. Thank you for your word that has promises in it that you, O oh Father, will begin every, everything that you have begun, you will finish it. For you are the beginning and the source and the origin of all things. And so Father, we come to you in complete confidence, complete trust, complete hope and faith that the best is yet to come. And though our world is in turmoil, situations and challenges have turned this world upside down. But you promised Abraham that if you would find one in the city, that you would spare the whole city. Lord have mercy. Your prayer intercessors and your people who are calling on your name have declared there are more than one of us in cities across these United States of America. And we are calling on the name of the Lord, the strong tower, the righteous tower. We're calling on the name of the Lord 
to intercede, to interfere, and to intervene. Bring back, bring back, bring back and bring us back to the place where we first believed. Where in God we trust is not just a statement written on a piece of money paper, but it is in fact the morals that we live by. In God we do trust. Thank you that as you provided for us to be a rich nation among other nations, bring us back to our first love and that is in the God, the creator of the universe. Father, we repent before you and we come this morning saying we exalt you. Hallelujah, we exalt you. We call upon your name. You have established us by faith in you. We are rooted and grounded and established in your word. We are walking daily to please you that we may find a refuge in who you are. And we're thanking you for salvation. So thank you that you have settled us in our faith that the best is yet to come. That you have settled us and what we believe that no weapon formed against us will ever prosper. That though there are other gods, there's no God quite like Jehovah, Adonai, and it is you to whom we call upon this morning. Father, fix what needs to be fixed. Mend what needs to be mended. Restore what needs to be restored. Reconcile humanity back to you again. Deliver us from the hand of the enemy. Work a work now, God, that we can declare God did it. Throw your weight around and be sovereign in everything and all that we do. For we declare there is none like an unto God, the mighty God, the delivering God, the strong God. So as we exalt you, establish our ways and cause us to know that we will never lose any battles. Exalt your name. We exalt your name. You are highly exalted. And we embrace the gospel of Jesus Christ. We exalt and to declare that even in this state of emergency that our world is in, you are all sufficient, God, and you will meet every need. Bind the hand of the enemy. Reduce the forces of enemies. Cause the devil to become a liar. And we will always be careful to exalt your name, to give you all the glory, to give you all the praise to give you all the honor. And we thank you for establishing our way and making our walks plain with you. Order our steps as we embrace and exalt you as Lord of Lords, King of Kings. In Jesus' name we pray, amen and thank God. Well, I trust you as I, We'll continue to pray throughout this day as we've set aside this day as a national day to have conversations and communication with God. God bless you.